Welcome back to the Tacoma Holic channel, everybody. If this is your first time stopping by and you love everything Tacoma related, go ahead and subscribe now. And today on the channel, I will be showing you how to mount your recovery boards, regardless of which brand you go with, for just a few bucks. Now, before we get started, I will be mounting this to my up top overland roof rack just because it fits perfectly in the middle of my two Plano boxes up there. But I was seriously considering mounting it sideways or perpendicular to my bed rails right there at the back or front of the cab depending on how you're looking at it so if you guys are interested in seeing a video on how to mount it there building some special brackets comment below and let me know so i am not running the full-fledged max tracks which i want to say are three to four hundred dollars if you are in crazy terrain and you really think you're going to need them by all means go with the best and max tracks is certainly at the top I've got myself a pair of the Maxa Escaper Buddies. I want to say they're like 115 bucks. I'll put a link in the description below if, in case you're interested in grabbing them. Haven't had them use them yet, but this is one of those things like with a high lift jack, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So we'll be mounting them on my truck so I can get them relatively easy if I'm ever in that situation where I need to whip them out. Now's the time to whip it out, B. And if you guys have recovery boards of any type, I'm sure you've seen those super expensive like locking pins that mount to different racks. Obviously that's probably the best way to go if you can afford it. They do lock, easy to mount and use, uh, but they are really expensive. So today I'm just gonna show you, you can spend a few bucks and make your own mounts and you should be good to go. And right here you can see this is all I'll be using. I got this aluminum, it's one inch wide flat bar from Home Depot, just a few dollars. Obviously this is more than I'll need for this application. I already cut up a few blocks, just uh, about two or three inches long and drilled a hole where I will install a stainless steel. Obviously this is all stainless steel, aside from the aluminum here. Stainless steel threaded rod, this is 80 millimeters long. I'll show you how I'm gonna use this up on my rack in just a second with a few stainless steel washers and nylock nuts. This will all be attached actually to the rack with these spring key nuts. They have the ball on the back so they're easy to slide in the channel up on my rack and the hole diameter and thread pitch for all the stuff I'm using is M6 by 1.0. I guess I'll put a link in the description for stuff like the stainless steel threaded rods. You can get these in all kinds of lengths though. For me, 80 millimeters was perfect since I will be mounting it sort of through the grab handles right here and that left me about a half inch clearance up here to tighten down the nut with the spacer right here. So let's hop up to the rack and see what we're talking about. So I am balanced up here on my rack, so if I fall and break my neck, this will be the last Tacoma Holic video. So as you can see, I've got these already spaced. I did mention they are gonna, the threaded rods will go through these grab handles, two in the back, two in the front. I got it spaced out symmetrically, so it's in line the way I want it. And right here, you can see these T-nuts, they just slip into the channel. That's what I love about them. You don't have to slide them in from the side like I've seen on other applications. I went ahead and tightened the threaded rod down into that. Now all I need to do is drop the recovery boards onto the four threaded rods, get the washer and the nylock nut tightened down, and that is pretty much it. Got it in place, nothing tightened down yet, but I'm just using the back of this to keep it parallel with the last bar right here. Just so I know everything's nice and lined up and it's overlapping this bar, even though I'm attaching it and the bar in front of it, just to keep a little more secure and the same goes for the front. And just tighten it down so everything pinches on all four corners, not going anywhere. I decided to go with the nylocks versus like wing nut or something like that, just because this is much less likely to get work free with road vibrations, whether from regular driving or off-roading, stuff like that. So there you can see four of the brackets, plenty of pressure to hold this in place. I have gone a few test drives, probably about 30 miles with it. No noise, nothing like that. The only thing I have to worry about mounting it up here is you can see these grooves, which provide great traction off-road. Those will collect water and stuff, so can't really avoid that, but there is the final product. Now, as far as security goes, obviously, if you have the hardware, you can take this off. I was thinking about adding some type of steel cable, like bicycle lock or something like that, but I mean, in reality, that's just gonna take an extra five seconds for a thief to cut that with some cable cutters. Leaving it by itself as is, I don't live in a bad neighborhood, so it should be fine, but if you guys think of any creative ways I can secure this even more, 
comment below, let me know. All right, everybody, that will do it for this video. Nice and quick today. Let me know what you think of the mounting on the roof rack. And if you would like to see me do another video making some brackets, mounting it to the back of the bed right there. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel by watching this video. Enjoy your upcoming weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.